To snooze or not to snooze? To deploy an airbag or maybe it's not an accident? How does your laptop protect the hard drive from damage? All those scenarios include one crucial part, a G-sensor or it's another name, an accelerometer. So what are those, how do they work and where to find them? Answer to this and more in this video. Let's go! A G-sensor or accelerometer is a device that allows you to measure and analyze linear and angular acceleration. This function is essential for many basic devices and systems used in every area of life, whether it's to detect if a system is falling, to detect seismic activity, or to flip your phone to snooze. The operation principle of an accelerometer is simple. It measures the acceleration force in G and takes measurements in one, two or three planes. If the threshold is exceeded, it can trigger an event. Currently, the most common accelerometers are three axis ones, which are designed as a system of three separate accelerometers, each of which measure the acceleration in a different direction, in X, Y and Z planes. An example of a three axis accelerometer is this Okistar OKY3230, which you can find on TME. While it is in a stable position, the device will measure only a standard acceleration of freefall, the force of gravity. Assuming that a three axis accelerometer is positioned so that the X axis sensor points left, the Y axis sensor points downwards, and the Z axis sensor is directed forward, the accelerometer will show the following. And there are three types of accelerometer that we will talk about. MEM capacitive accelerometers, piezoelectric and piezoresistive. The MEMS capacitive accelerometers are the cheapest and the smallest among the three. As the name states, it's a microelectromechanical system and it is made of components between 1 and 100 micrometers. The principle of its operation boils down to changing the position of a known mass suspended on springs. One end of the spring is attached to the capacitor, while the other end is attached to the mass. Under the force acting on the sensor, the mass moves, which causes the change in the distance between the plates and thus changes the capacitance. One of their advantages is the possibility to mount them on a PCB. However, their accuracy is lower than other types of accelerometers, especially in the case of high amplitude signals and frequencies. But if you have a bigger budget and you need a wider measuring range, try the piezoresistive accelerometers. Those accelerometers use a piezoresistive effect, which is a change in the electrical resistivity of a semiconductor or metal when mechanical stress is applied. The accelerometer then converts the change into electrical signal. Although they give you a wider measuring range and the possibility to measure slow changing signals, they require temperature compensation and have problems with detecting weak signals. However, no worries, for low amplitude signals we have the piezoelectric accelerometers. The working principle is similar to the piezoresistive one. Under the influence of acceleration, the material, usually PZT, deforms and generates a change. However, in this case it's not resistance, but electric charge. Piezoelectric accelerometers are highly sensitive and accurate, which makes them suitable for a wide range of applications, from extremely advanced and precise seismic measurements to crash and impact tests under adverse conditions. Before going to TMEU and selecting your accelerometer and liking this video, here are a few guidelines that will help you to go through the process. You should ask yourself, what is the amplitude of the vibrations? What is the range of the frequencies? What are the environmental conditions? Check for temperature, humidity and electromagnetic interferences. What is the communication interface? You should also check other kits that include additional sensors like magnetometers and gyroscopes that might come handy in your project. Now you know what makes your phone to rotate the photo on the screen. And by the way, do not snooze your alarm. Scientists say it's unhealthy. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.